Good morning. My name is Paul Weaver and it's my joy today to be able to share the devotion with you on this glorious Resurrection Day. My Easter talk today has an interesting title, Revelation in Hindsight. Revelation in Hindsight exposes the fact that our knowledge at the time of our decision making was incomplete. It shows us we made a decision without understanding all the facts or believing what was being said at that particular time. Revelation in hindsight, of course, can often come too late. You can't always change the outcome of your decisions. How many of us, when we were growing up, uh, were told by our parents things that we either didn't believe or didn't want to believe or didn't understand the ramifications of, only to discover later when we were older that they were right and we were wrong? Have you ever wished you could go back in time with the knowledge you now have and make a different decision to the one you made all those years ago. Frederick Van Schagel, in his book Philosophical Fragments, said these words, the historian is a prophet looking backwards. Arthur Cannon Doyle said it is easier to be wise after the event. So looking back with new information can actually change your viewpoint. We are celebrating Easter. It is the resurrection that is the key to understanding the uniqueness of the Christian message. The angel said to the women who came to the tomb long ago, he is not here, he is risen. And this wonderful phrase carries the questions of where, why and how of the resurrection. Where is he? Well, he's alive. He's risen. The place of death could no longer hold him. There is a, a greater power than death and its resurrection. Death is not the end. Why has he risen? Because he is who he said he was. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. How did this happen? Well, the Bible tells us God raised him from the dead because his son was perfect. This is what Peter's talking about in Acts chapter 2. God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Many people thought all those years ago that this event could not happen, even though Jesus had so clearly spoken about his resurrection uh, and that it would happen. In John chapter 2, Jesus said, destroy this temple, talking about his body, and in three days I will raise it up again. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus gave the religious leaders the sign of Jonah and his three-day experience in the fish's stomach as an evidence. In John chapter 10, uh, we hear of Jesus uh, giving his personal declaration of his authority to raise himself from the dead. In Matthew chapter 27, the, give, the chief uh, priests and the Pharisees remember Jesus saying these words. He would rise on the third day, and that's why they ordered the tomb to be guarded. In Luke chapter 24, the angels reminded the women at the tomb after the resurrection about the words of Jesus concerning his resurrection on the third day. And so the resurrection was the pivotal point of revelation and predicted evidence of Christ's authenticity. The resurrection, therefore, condemns the critics as being wrong. Herod was wrong. Why? Well, I can hear you saying with me, because Christ is risen. He thought he could kill the truth. He could not handle a contender to his throne. And that is always the number one reason why people reject Christ. Pilate was wrong. Why? Because Christ is risen. He thought you could kill the truth, but you can't. It's like a cork in the water. You can push it down, pretend it's not there, but it will rise again to the surface. The crowd were wrong. Why? Because Jesus is risen. Crucify him, they shouted. But the one who is the resurrection and the life cannot be extinguished by crucifixion. The religious leaders were wrong. Why? Because Christ is risen. You can't successfully discredit what is authentic. The atheists were wrong. Why? Because Christ is risen. You cannot reduce God into a formula, a test tube of analysis. His mystery is the proof of his existence. Every scientist is stimulated by mystery. It is the adrenaline that drives them to discover. Yet God, who is the greatest mystery, 
they dismiss because he is a mystery. This is what the coming of Jesus to earth is all about. God revealing himself in his son so that sin can be dealt with and we can know the mystery. The skeptics were wrong. Why? Because Christ is risen. Critical words are cheap when aligned against the truth. So let me say, child of God, today, you were right when you placed your faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Christ is risen. The resurrection converts the discouraged. The disciples, Peter, who had denied Jesus three times, uh, Thomas, who had given up on his faith, and the disciples on the Emmaus Road who had hoped that Jesus was the Messiah, were soon running back to Jerusalem with the news Jesus is risen. The resurrection comforts the mourners, the women who had sat at the feet of Jesus when he was on the cross, are now running with the good news to the disciples. We have seen Jesus. The resurrection confirms the authenticity of Jesus Christ. What Jesus said had come to pass. The resurrection is the affirmation of the certainty of the coming again of Jesus Christ. If I go away, I will come again. Only a resurrected Christ can do this. The fact of the resurrection is pivotal to the life and work of Jesus Christ. Paul said these words simply, if Christ is not risen, our faith is worthless. Embedded in the subconscious of thousands of people were these words of Jesus concerning resurrection. The Jewish leaders knew about it. They were afraid uh, that the disciples would steal the body of Jesus uh, and so they, they, they to uphold the story of the resurrection. Pilate knew about it and put a guard on the tomb and a seal on the stone. The disciples knew about it but doubted we had hoped. Let me say something right now. If you really want to know about the authenticity of Jesus, you can find it all over this period of history through the transformation in the lives of those who met the living Christ. Hindsight is generally speaking knowledge too late. It's no good knowing you won the horse race when the race is over. This is why we preach the message of the gospel, because we want people to make a choice to follow Jesus Christ before it is too late. On that resurrection day, the women could not roll the stone away. The soldiers would not let the stone be rolled away. Pilate did not want the stone to be rolled away, but God insisted the stone must be rolled away, not to let Jesus out, but to let the women and the disciples in. The empty tomb alone did not prove Christ had risen, of course. The words of the angel did. He is not here. Be careful who you believe. The wisdom, the visible presence of Jesus did. His crucifixion marks, eating with the disciples. The ascension of Jesus did. The disciples watch him ascend into the heavens. The day of Pentecost did. His promise to the disciples was fulfilled. The martyrdom of most of the disciples proved this very fact. The power and proof of the resurrection was established primarily away from the open tomb. Everything that Jesus predicted came to pass. Christ died. Christ rose again. Christ will come again. Dear Christians, on this day of resurrection, lift up your voice and worship the resurrected Christ. He is risen, he knows you, he loves you, and one day you will see him face to face. Because you have believed, hindsight will not condemn you, but affirm your you eternally as a child of the living God. Have a great day. God bless you.